What's up guys, it's your boy Fixit Daniel, and today we're back on the scooter. It's been a while, but we are going to be getting this bike back together. I'm super stoked, I hope you guys are stoked, so let's get into it. Guys, welcome to the channel, and thank you so much for watching. If you guys have not seen this build being put together, you're missing out. You got to check out those videos. But today is a super happy day. It's raining outside, but I'm happy inside because we're going to be finally getting this bike back together. We got everything we need. We got all the parts. We got everything we were waiting on. The crank finally came. And now we can actually start putting this bike back together. Um, in the previous videos, we've done everything. We've rebuilt and repainted. We've done everything. We've gotten parts. We've had gotten everything, and now we can finally start putting it together. So let me go and show you guys what we got so far so we can get started. Guys, this is a good super moment here. Everything. We've got parts everywhere. It's a little chaotic, but I know where everything is. We are getting this all back together. We're getting this motor back together. We're getting it back in this bike. We got everything. The cranks right there. We got all the parts over in here, the cams and valves stuff that's over there. I mean, we've gotten everything. So we started putting together back on this crank, the flywheel side, just trying to get the um, the stator all back into the place and get it all marked. We kind of just, just trying to get everything kind of uh, set up right. And we got everything. We got the flywheel over there. We got a new chain. The new chain came in. This crank is the old crank. We got a new crank, which is in this box right here. This is the half of the motor. It's been painted, which looks absolutely amazing. And we just got everything. And we're now we're just piecing everything back together. We're going to be doing it slow and meticulously because I don't want to miss anything. It's been it's been a good couple of weeks since I've actually have messed with this. You know, we've done the painting, we've done all that, we did all the cleaning and everything. What we were really waiting for is the crank, the, the actual 100% crank, just like this. The OEM um, has def is definitely come. It looks exactly like this. No measurements, no everything. The only thing I have to do is I had to take off this side of the bearing. Here's the other side. This is the actual um, uh, crank side bearing i tried getting it off that way but then i realized i gotta get these little these little teeth things off and that wasn't working so i finally got it off of the actual side that i need to get it off of um one extra tip i want to give you guys heads up in my last video i said something about these burn marks could actually be the reason why this crank is bad actually after everything is said and done this crank was actually 100 percent fine um a guy in a forum i've been talking to um, uh, had told me that this burn mark is just how they always come because <clears throat> over here, the new crank has the exact same burn marks. So I don't know if I can pull it out, but if I can get it, see, the new crank has the exact same burn marks. So the guy was telling me that those burn marks are not because the crank is bad or gotten overheated. It's just the way that the metal comes and just has a little burn mark on it. But um, we definitely are fine with that. And we did a little balancing check. I basically just put the balance, put the crank on the actual jacks and kind of moved it up and down to make sure that it was balanced. It was perfectly balanced. But we can't use it anymore because um, we bent the actual nut for the crank side. But if I could ever get this off, I could release, reuse this. We could probably re reuse this if we needed to. This is actually perfectly fine. You just have to, um, you just have to get a machine to press this out. And then you can get this whole entire thing taken apart. Um, but this side is definitely done. Unless I can finally find some ways to bend that back. I seriously doubt I will be able to because this is like this head got really mushroomed. So this crank is pretty much done. But if we need to use it for parts, we could. So um, maybe keep that in mind. And then we have our flywheel. Flywheel is ready to go back in. Ready to rock and roll. Then we have our crank. We got our guides. 
which the guys actually look super, super good. We'll clean those up, get those back in there. That's the broken chain, which this broken chain is bad. So we got all that stuff. We got everything. We got some parts up here. We got the, the we got everything, guys. I am super, super happy to get this back together. We're gonna take our time, do it step by step the right way. Um, but I do want to first give a huge, huge shout out. It's not this show is not promoted by them, but I did some serious talking with these guys. Um, the company is called Android Extended. Um, they're the company that had all the parts I needed. Um, they're based out. They're based overseas. I think they're in Taiwan. But they're the guys that I bought my when I first started this build. They're the ones that I bought my piston and housing from. They're the ones that I bought the valve from. And they're also the ones that I bought the crank from. And um, I talked to the guy, Nate, good guy. Uh, we've been chatting back and forth. He helped me out um, with um, with everything I needed for the crank. Um, we, we did some talking, you know, uh, just told him what I was and what I was trying to do. He helped me out so much. Um, huge, huge thank, thank you to him. Um, for, for doing that for me. I really needed this crank. It was the last one and I really needed to have it because if I didn't have that crank, my next step would have been buying a motor because if I needed this perfect right crank, the OEM crank. So both, all three parts, the piston housing, the crank, uh, the uh, valve housing with the, with the valves. Well, they didn't come with the, yes, with the valves um, and the crank are all OEM from from Taiwan, so they are 100% good quality. I highly recommend them. They, um, they were on uh, eBay. They helped me out so much um, with their parts and everything, and I'm super stoked for that. And thank you, Nate, for helping me out. I really do appreciate it. Um, and I didn't even realize that I bought in like two more parts from you previous beforehand, but um, but yes, um, thank you so much for helping me out, and I really do appreciate it. Um, so hopefully he's watching this and uh, you can see the build. So, um, all right, so now we're gonna go ahead and go ahead and get back on this, get that taken care of, and then we're going to get back to the, um, we're gonna get on the flywheel side. So we're gonna do this in reverse. So we pretty much are going backwards. So the last thing we took off was the, um, the flywheel cover, the stator, when we took off, that we separated the uh, the crank from the variator side of the motor, and then we finally got the uh, uh, crank off of the um, the flywheel side. So we're gonna reverse that. So basically, what we're gonna do is, so now that we got that already taken care of, we need to get the bearing back on the new crank. I got it in the freezer right now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the heat gun. We're gonna heat the side where the um, actually. Let me show you what we actually have. So just to give you kind of an understandable, what I'm trying to do is I took, so this is the old crank. After, after getting this off, I don't know why it was so stuck on there, but it was stuck on there really, really well. But we finally got it off, um, not damaging it or anything. I used the correct tool. I used a, a crank uh, separator, and then I just had some jaws that just pulled the, the last little bit off of here, and then boom, it came off. A couple of pulls, and boom, it was off. So what we need to do is we need to take this perfectly intact bearing that I have in the deep freezer, freezing. What we're going to do is we need to heat. We need to heat this area up um, just, just a little bit, maybe a couple hundred degrees, 300 degrees, whatever. And then as we get this thing hot to 300, we're going to go grab that bearing and hopefully slide it on. I've watched so many videos of people doing it. Some people use torch um, to get it super hot, like 300 degrees for a few minutes. And then once they got it really hot, they just took the bearing and slid right on. And then boom, they're, they're in business. So that's what we need to do. And then we also need to do the same thing over here. <clears throat> so, after, so after we get, you know, we got to get the... The pump back in. We got to get the chain. We got to get everything back together before we continue moving forward. We need to get the um, the oil pump chain. We need to get the crank chain. We need to get the guys. We need to get everything already set. The only thing we're going to be missing is the crank. The crank will be the last thing. Then the flywheel. And then 
we'll be good to go. Once we get that all segmented and all back in there, we'll be good. And then, you know, we got to figure out if if this is going to slide back in. Perfect. Because it fell out without any effort. I didn't have to pull it out. It just fell out. So I'm hoping that this is going to be enough room where it just falls right back in. Um, if not, then we'll heat it up a little bit. Just a little bit. And then we'll just drop it right on in. Hopefully that will definitely work. If I have to, I will go get some can of uh, air. Um, some like the air cans that you use to clean off like computer dust air. That, that CO2 air. And then we'll get this um, bearing that's on the new one. We'll get this bearing frozen with spraying it. And then it should just drop right in. And then we can marry the two motors together, get the other side on there, drop it in. We put some sealant on there. Actually, this is the actual gasket for the actual, um, for, um, this is actually the gasket for the two to marry. So it's just kind of crazy that I actually got to be able to keep this intact. Because I was going to actually use some um, some engine gasket seal. And I may. I may put, I may clean this off and just do just a nice little thin light coat. Just to make sure this sticks. But this is actually holding it really well. There's only a few areas like this area. This, I'm sorry. I wasn't even showing it to you. <laughs> so, this is the gasket that goes in between the two. So, it actually stayed intact. Um, so, there's just a few areas like here, here here and i think here that just kind of gotten torn off so we could probably put some some um some thick um uh, engine gasket right in here and then here and here because this is actually the gasket so we really don't have to do too much craziness to it we literally can maybe maybe i put a little bit on this side just a little thickness on that side just to make sure that's gonna stick and hold and there's no gonna be no leaks and boom we can mount it back together i'm so happy that this actually stayed together. I was I was worried that this wasn't going to work. But it actually held together. And it didn't rip apart. So I'm super happy about that. And the guys at the machine shop didn't destroy it either. So just getting this button up real quick. Shouldn't take but a few minutes. Just to get all the. We got actually. We got a new. Um, you know little. Uh, oil catch for this. So we can stick right back in. Make sure we're not missing anything. And then put this to the side. And then go ahead and start working on that. All right, guys, so we pretty much, this one's a pretty much easy thing to do. We're just really pretty much just going to button everything back up. Uh, like I said, this is the stator. The flywheel goes around, and then the on the flywheel, there's big bumps, and it just collects over there. So, so we're pretty good. So this is actually pretty much already good to go. Um, so all we need to do is we just need to put the oil plug um and the dipstick and then the little uh uh top dead center cap back on so really quite simple there's not really a whole lot left um the only reason i want to change is because we got this new kit because these this nut here has pretty much been rounded so we're not going to be using that anymore so i got a whole new one it looks exactly the same so really simple this is one of the parts that we had for forever. So yeah, really quite simple. It all just fits in there. So, so, um, so we'll do this real quick. This is really easy. <clears throat> all right. So it pretty much just goes right in here. Um, and as you see, it just, just sits in there and then, this sits in here, and we just take it, push, get our turn, and then now we're good. And then now it's right here, in here. All right, so we're all good. And then, really quite simple, we'll just lay this flat, take our dipstick. Alright, so we get our rag, I think our secondary rag. Oh, okay, we'll just use this one. And just wipe it. Wipe off some of this excess stuff. This is all going to have new, fresh oil in it. Alright, so. Third of dipstick. 
And then last, it's just this cap here. We have to paint the bolts for the uh, thermostat housing because this has been painted on. So uh, what we want to do is we want to paint it the same color so it doesn't look so terrible. And then we'll, we'll go from there. So, uh, so yeah. This is all starting to flake off. But we should be good. All right. So that's good. That's done. We will go with that. And then there we go. So... So we just got to get, this is all good again. This just fits right here in this little slot. So when it marries to the, to the, um, the, uh, the casing, it should be good. I think we're going to probably put a little bit of that, uh, cause there's usually was a gasket here. So we are going to probably put some, um, um, uh, engine gasket seal, um, all over this stuff. Make sure we try to cover everything that we need to cover because there was a gasket and I don't have a new one for it. So um, we'll uh, put this off to the side, but then we'll put some gasket sealer on here when we're ready to put this cover on. We're going to put this off to the side and then now we're going to start uh, hopefully heating up the crank and get that bearing on. All right, guys. So this is our new crank. This is the one that I got. So... So as you see, it's brand spanking new. It just sits. There's no, there's no issues. This is brand spanking new, identical to the one that I just took off. It's got the, everything. It's got the teeth for the crank, teeth for the bearings, uh, for for the oil. It's already greased, ready to go, really good. The only thing we got to do is we got to put the old one, the old crank side bearing, on this one. And in order to get it on, I've seen so many methods. Some people have taken torches to this and heated it up. Um, I, am, I don't. I have a torch, but it's not a great torch, so I'm going to use this. This is my heat gun. This thing will go up to 2,000 degrees. Um, but we're probably going to just keep it about maybe like, I'm going to go like maybe three or 400. And then what we'll do is we'll take the bearing from the freezer and then we'll slide it on. Should be just a few minutes of heating and then it should just slide right on. So we're gonna turn on our thing, our heat gun. Do a nice all around thing. Torch would be a lot more hotter, a lot more faster. But this is a little more safer and everything so and it does get pretty hot um so we just want it just enough to be super hot enough to get it and i'm gonna have to do this super quick so like i said this thing is super cold so we're gonna get it super hot i figure like 500 is pretty good that's about maybe the temperature would be inside the bike so hopefully this will this will mimic some heat and it'll be expanding enough to uh, get that piece on there so cross fingers okay guys we're back um, we've got this thing pretty hot um, so we're gonna go ahead and give it a whirl and see what happens green this bearings been in the freezer since yesterday and hopefully it'll slide right on with no issues so let's give it a go before it cools off No, still no way. It's supposed to just slide on. Ooh, it's hot. <laughs> this whole entire thing is hot. And it still won't slide on. Yeah. Wait. Wait a sec. Nah, it's still not, it's still not going on there. It's got to go over this hump onto here and still not, still not allowing it to, but it gets on here. 
but just not on the not on that other side. It's almost there. It's just just <laughs> well, guys. Um, I'm living up to my name, Fix It Daniel, because every time I have a problem, I can always fix it. I just fixed the the actual bearing going on top of the crankshaft. I'm gonna show you guys what I did, which is pretty cool. Okay, guys. So as you see, I got it on here. No press, no nothing, no heat, no nothing. This is actually it's actually cooled down quite significantly, and uh, I took it out of the freezer. But it's actually on, and I'm gonna show you guys how I got it on. Well, first, well, let me explain. So first, you know, it was it's got to about here, but it wouldn't go onto this big part right here in the center. So you know, it looked like it was it could go on, and I thought heating it up and doing the um, and doing the heating up and the freezer thing did not work on this. Um, I don't know if it's just because the way that it worked, maybe it wasn't enough heat, maybe it wasn't enough freezing, who knows, but I had this thing in for, uh, a day, maybe I needed it longer, and I had this thing hot to like a thousand from the heat gun, which is probably not a thousand, it's probably a little less than that, but this whole, it was so hot, the whole entire thing was hot, so I think I did some, but, um, it didn't work for this. So I saved my money, I saved myself some money by not going to get a can of cold air, and I saved myself some time by not going around the shops all over the place looking for clamps or whatever. So what I did was, I did some research, looking around, and I still couldn't find a press-on tool, and I found one in a kit, and it was just too expensive, it would take forever. So this is what I did. Um, I just took some minutes to figure out what I needed to do, and what it is basically is, I saw a video where a guy, he just took, he actually took the bearing and, me, and made it, make sure that it either fit either in this ring here or this ring here. Well, I have a tool that is not meant for that, but I utilized it for what it's for. And I think it's actually what it's for, but I utilized it for something else. So this right here is, um, I think this is actually the, this is actually one of the puller tools, or I think I think it's no, it's not one of the puller tools. This is actually this is actually what you're supposed to use to put on the bearing. But I didn't have supposedly you're supposed to be like basically you take take this piece, you screw it on, and then it's supposed to go up in here into this hole. As soon as I get it lined up. So it's supposed to go in this hole like that. Then you screw on, get you to see. So you screw the tool on, and this goes down like this. And then what it does is um, the, the tool that's up under is supposed to screw on to the actual tip of the of the shaft. And then you just take this and crank it down. And, and what it would do is as the nut, there's a nut right here. This nut would go on this, and you would just crank it. You would just crank this down until until so that basically what it would do is you just crank it and it would just push it'll push push this down well i don't have the actual threads for this it's too this is was way 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 too big so it wasn't going to work so i didn't know what else to do and i couldn't think of anything then i saw a guy where he just took the exact same uh some some similar tool and he just hammered it on and i was like wait a minute let me see if i could find something that have something like that well i took the nut off slid this out Set it right on top, and look, it actually fits completely on the outside of this bearing. So, I pretty much did was, I took my table, this is just a little coffee table that we don't no longer use, I use this as a wood bench. I made a hole, made a nice big hole, so this piece here can go right down in, sit right on top. Put the bearing, got it nice and even, put a little bit of oil on there, took this, Set it right on top ever so gently, make sure it was nice and straight. Took my hammer and pound. Pound it like two or three times and it's on there. Simple, fast, and easy, and I didn't even have to use a tool. And I could use this tool to do this on the crank casing if I have to. So the crank casing is the same thing where these, so there's holes for this side of the motor 
and the other side of the motor and they all fit in there so all i gotta do is just put a little bit of oil in that cavity put that in there and maybe just put this on the other end and give it a couple of taps and that's it i could probably heat that up and it'll probably fall in but I'm going to just do that. I got some assembly lube. I got some different kinds of lubrication I could use to put on this. And I'm going to just do it that way. And that'll take care of my issue of getting this in. And I won't destroy anything. So it is perfectly on there. It is perfectly good. And, sh and everything. I mean, look at this, guys. Completely, utterly perfect. No issues whatsoever. Just took me a few minutes of thinking, taking my time. This is what I'm talking about. And this is what I'm being mean by, you know, DIY stuff. And you just slow down, take your time, figure out the issues. I'm a problem solver. I'm a problem solver by nature. I always seem to figure out this kind of stuff. And I just figured it out, save myself some time and energy because I was going to go to my friend's shop. We can actually now go ahead and get this bearing uh, this this crank installed on the stator side all right guys so now we are going to go ahead and try to get this crank in i decided what we're going to do is before we even do anything with the chain on the stator side we're going to we're going to do it this way we're going to get the crank in on this side of the motor get it in there then we'll go ahead and put our our gasket seal in the places that didn't have it and then we're going to uh, push the casing in on the stator side. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to get the whole entire motor together and let it sit because um, in these areas it's got to sit that doesn't have the gasket anymore. It has to sit for 24 hours for it to seal. Now everything else around it has all the gaskets so it doesn't have to wait and seal. So just that those areas will be perfectly fine. So if we go ahead and get the crank in and get the and get the uh, other side of the stator casing and the crank just to crank in before we do the chiming chain, before we do the oil pump and the oil pump chain, that'll be perfect. Because then after that, we can go ahead and continue on. Because once we put the cover casing for the stator, we do have to put some uh, gasket sealer all the way around and that will have to sit for 24 hours again. So if we hurry and kind of get that going, then we can, <clears throat> we can go ahead and let this sit overnight and then we can come back the next day and then finish everything up so my goal is right now as of just for today is to get this part done the casing and cover and every well uh not the casing and cover but if we have time we can do the stator casing cover but at least get the crank and the motor to completely all one that's what we're planning on doing right now so what we're going to do i have some Lucas Assembly Lube is supposed to be good for bearings, and we're going to use these for the valves. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put a little bit on a paint stick. I mean on a paintbrush. So we're going to just get a little on there. We don't need a whole lot. Just enough to help it kind of groove in there. So Assembly Lube is just for keep it from pre, you know, when... The oil hasn't gotten there yet. So we're just going to put just a little bit on there to help get that in there. Now we're going to grab the crank. All right. So we're just going to take it. Just stick it in. Get it as straight as possible. Hopefully this works. Take our tool and hammer. Stop and check. Oh, it's going. It's going. Just need a little more oomph. One more hit. Let's do one more for good measure. We're good. All right. Yep, we're good. It worked. Just a little bit of just a little bit of smashing. And now it's in there. So all right. 
right, yeah, we're good. All right, so we got this half. We just need to get some some uh, gasket seal. Put it right on this these corners. That make sure it, it has a nice good gap. Technically, you kind of don't really need it, but <clears throat> we want to make sure it's meshing nice and well. So I'm gonna put a little bit on there anyway. So let me get my stuff, and we'll put some on there. All right, guys. So now we're gonna go ahead and get this going. So I just want to clean off some of this extra stuff. <clears throat> and all we're going to do is we're going to take some gasket seal and just put it right here and here since everything else is still pretty much held in place. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and I got some ultra black gasket seal we're going to use on. So just take a little bit on my finger. <clears throat> I'm just going to cover it just like that. Okay. All right. So now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to lube this side as well. some nice lube in there get it nice and lubed up I think the more the better so that would nice and it'll nicely slide in there all right that looks pretty good and then what we're gonna do come over to the motor get it nice and lined up all right This one's a little tricky because it's got some pins lined up, otherwise we will be in some serious trouble. So this one's going to take a little bit of finessing than the other one. Right. So this is the critical moment. We have to make sure we get this nice and lined up right, otherwise we could have an issue. So we're just going to do this ever so slightly. That is in so everything is nice and lined up perfect I actually can go ahead and bolt this um, and let it sit because like I said I don't need to put there's only just a couple of spots that needed this, the ceiling part the rest of it has the gasket so I can go ahead and bolt this so we're gonna go ahead and get this tightened down on both sides and then that'll take care of the motor part all right, guys, so we're going to go ahead and get this bolted. It's 10 bolts, two on this side and 10 on the other side. So the first two are, let me get you an angle so you can see. The uh, first two holes, one goes here, right here in this hole, and then the other one goes right here in that hole, just these two. The 10 go on the other side. Okay. Let me try this side. Okay, so here's one. Like they're all different sizes. Yeah, they're all different sizes. We'll softly get them on there so we can get them all meshed together. Nah, doesn't look like it. Whew! Because these bolts are very soft and this metal and it doesn't take a whole lot to break these. Just the, even over tightening is a critical so these these bolts are not exactly uh 
you know, super strong. They're strong enough to hold, but they're not, they're not meant to, you're just meant to hold it firmly. So we got to be very careful about over torque, over torquing. Perfect. Guys, we are pretty much in the motion of where we need to be. This is going to be so free. This is so good. <laughs> All right. We are good. We are so good right now. All right. So now we can let that stuff sit. Then we can transfer this to this side. And then now we can work on putting in the chain and all the other stuff that's supposed to go in here. So we got to put the, the crank chain, which is on the inside. And then this is this chain, this crank gear is for the, um, oil pump. So the oil pump goes down in there. Um, the gears and stuff go right into there and we should be good. So, um, I think since, since everything's coming together nice and fast, we could probably try to go ahead and get everything all in here and then get this case cover. Um, really what's going to be critical is the, um, the flywheel, the flywheel and everything else. That's what's going to be really interesting once we get this all taken care of. So, um, let's go ahead and get these inner gears in and then we should be good. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and start working on getting this all ready so we're going to clean up what well, I can clean up make sure there's no metal debris or anything like that which I don't think there is it's just this is just dirt I didn't get a chance to clean this side very very good but it's clean up enough Let me make sure so yeah because this is where the oil and stuff goes so we want to make sure we get this all nice and clean as much as we can um, get all this debris out of here. So yeah, it's coming together. Just want to make sure we get everything. Make sure everything's clean and pump back in here. Look at what we can. Yeah, this is the pump. Make sure the surface is clean here. It is. This guy, Jesus Christ, this thing's slippery. <laughs> Put a little bit of um, assembly lube in there. All right. Let me go out like this. Mount the hole. Get the screws in. All right, so we're gonna get this pump back in here. Get this piece back in here. Not for sure what this is. Whatever it is, it's going back in here. Click. <laughs> We're going to be doing our little clicks on this thing because we don't want it to be any tighter than it has to be. So, the less tidy, the better. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to do. Um, now we're going to go ahead and do the 
Actually, we got to do the crank first. So, here's our new, new chain, new crank. So, really quite simple, really easy. So, we're just going to just stick it in this way. Get it over. All right, and then we got to get it on the actual teeth. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a zip tie. I'm going to zip tie this thing so this doesn't fall. Or maybe we can just let it hang. Can we let it hang? Yeah, we can let it hang. Okay, cool. Never mind. All right, then we're going to go ahead and see where this guide goes. I think the guide goes like right here. That makes sense. So, get this nut. Put this guy, actually, let's clean this guy, make sure it's, make sure it's clean. All right, it looks pretty clean. Got a little bit of wear, but you know, nothing's, nothing's too terrible. Take our nut. Twelve millimeter. So twelve millimeter bolt. our guide make sure it's nice and tight don't overdo it click okay now where is my oh here we go and then now we can put in our Oil pump, oil pump uh, chain. So this oil pump chain sprocket goes on here and goes on there. So it's actually got to actually um, mesh. Our spreader tool got a little clip that holds that on there. There we go. Yep, that's on there. Chains on there, guys on there. Now, this is the this is the sprocket for the starter. I believe, I believe it goes this way. So it goes on here, and then the gear for the flywheel meshes in with there. So, so we should be good. I'm gonna put some uh, put some uh, assembly lube on this. All right. We pretty much got everything together. Now all we gotta do now is we gotta get the the chain holder down. So this goes right here. Forgot to put the chain bolt holder down. All right. Let's make sure this chain doesn't get taut in there. We don't need it to walk right now. OK. 
okay just like that I believe this is the nut this is the nut all right good luckily I don't have to take anything else off to get to it <laughs> all right so we must go this way yep all right Looking good, guys. Looking really good. This is all coming back together. It's a lot easier than I actually thought it was going to. All right. Now, all we gotta do is put the cover over it and tighten it all back up. We're gonna put some um, some of that, um, the black gasket stuff on there. And guys, we should be good. We're gonna go ahead and put this cover back on. So, so I'm gonna make sure that this uh, piece is right. All right, make sure we got the pins in there, all the pins are in there, yep. All right, here we go. Man, this metal thing is sucking it on there. I'm trying to get it over this, uh, this pump's shaft. But there we go. Never mind, we got it. Let me look at these pins lined up. There we go. The mission. Whew! All right. So now we can go ahead and cinch these up. Doing everything by hand on this because I don't want to break anything. You've gotten so good with getting everything together. The last thing I want to do is start breaking stuff. Cinching everything down, kind of go in a somewhat sequence. So this is where the oil gonna go so we definitely got to make sure we get everything cinched up
So we gotta let these sit for 24 hours before we even add any oil to it, which is fine, because we still have to get the top part of the motor on there and everything, so that shouldn't be much of a problem. All right, we're getting there. All right, guys, we are good, looking good. As this motor is all together, it's just got to let it dry for 24 hours before we uh, put oil in it, which by the time we get oil in it, it'll be completely dry. Um, so I am super, super happy with what we got and what we found. And uh, I'm just, just happy for everything. So um, we're actually making some serious good progress. I mean, the only thing left now to do is to put the other parts of the motor on, which I think we will go ahead and start doing. We'll get everything on except for the valve. So I think that will be the last final piece. So we're gonna go ahead and get the actual piston and the piston housing on and get that all cinched up, get that all bolted. And then the last final piece will be the actual um, the valves on top. And we can put the wheel back on um, and then we can literally get this motor back in so um, let's go ahead and start doing it. All right guys, so now we're gonna go ahead and do the piston and get the housing in. So we're gonna go ahead and do our best to hold on to this and cut this off. Hopefully it stays in place and doesn't fall apart, but that would suck. So we're gonna do our best to try and get this thing to on out because I don't want to fall off the track. Okay, I think that's good right there. So leave that there. All right, guys. So we got it. Make sure the if you're not familiar, make sure the end in is for intake, and then this is for the exhaust. Normally, as long as you got the end pointing up towards the motor, then you're fine. So we already got the ring on one side, makes that life easier. So what we do is we slide this in and up. And then we just take our shaft piece. Get it in, push it all the way in. So we've got room for the piece. Okay. Now we're just going to try and get the piece in. I just gotta do now is just turn it so that way the opening is got the the ring so that way when you take it off next time it'll be a lot more easier to just stick something behind it and then voila there we go Then the piston. All right. Huh. That was worse than uh, I actually thought it'd be. Now we just got to put this on. I'm gonna coat this with some um, some uh, assembly lube. You guys, I got a nice good coat in there. So now. We are going to put this on. So, I uh, make sure I gotta get my dial pins. Okay. 
Don't forget your dial pins. Just like so. Get them in the hole. Bring them on down. Okay. Okay, now we take our tool so we can get the chain. And now we're good. Now we just bring it on down. Nice and easy. Boom. It's actually a top dead center, which is awesome. Guides in. One goes on this side. One goes on this side. Put this through. And there we go. Now, all we gotta do now is uh, put together the valve, get that on there, get it tight. We should be good to go. All right, guys, so here's a starter. It's a little crusty for this new thing, but I'm not gonna go out and buy a brand new starter just because it's to make it look pretty. Um, you know what, let's, let's paint it, let's wait. We're gonna wait, we're gonna paint this so this will match it look a little pretty. Um, I'll just make sure I cover all the ports here and stuff and we'll spray it, why not? What the heck, what, what the heck can go wrong? So we'll save this one for later, and then we'll put this one on, and we'll paint it just so it'll match. All right, guys, and just like that, we're going to stop. We're going to take a little bit of a break. Um, it actually works really well. Um, everything is coming together really, really nice. been taking my time and piecing it all back together. I thought I was going to have a hard time getting it all back together just because it's been so long. But it actually is coming together really, really well. Everything is fitting, not too much hang-ups. Um, the only hang-up I really had was the um, this, the uh, the bearings for the crank. And then that actually, after that, everything started really coming together. Everything slid on. The flywheel slid on. Not uh, torqued. Everything worked really, really well. I'm super happy that everything is coming back together. Um, I guess it was a good idea to go ahead and strip it down. I mean, we needed to clean out the old oil, all the metal shavings and everything so i'm super happy to have this all back together looking nice and pretty uh clean and getting it back in this bike soon hopefully this will fix all the issues uh cross fingers i really think it will once we get to the valves and then the cranks in so everything from the bottom end to the top will be completely redone new everything cleaned out everything everything taken apart greased clean put back together so I'm hoping that with doing all that effort, we will get this thing to turn, run, and drive as good as it has ever been. So I'm super happy and super stoked to get to this, and I'm super happy that we're getting back on this. I hope you guys are. Please go and like and subscribe if you guys haven't. Please give me a thumbs up if you like this. I'm shooting for a lot of likes on this. Um, not really for sure how many. We'll say, um, why don't we say 500 likes? <laughs> Um, 500, let's see if we can get to 500 likes on all, on this project, um, for today. So we'll see how far that goes. Um, I really thank you guys for, for watching and giving me support and, and, and love and, uh, collaborate with a lot of people to get this bike back together since definitely it's not existence anymore. Um, so, uh, they don't make it, but there's still parts out there. You just have to get them either used or sometimes have to go brand new, but, um, yeah, so we're going to wait till tomorrow, let this bike cure completely, not touch it anymore, put it off to the side, let it cure. Um, we're, uh, tomorrow, it should be good. Then we can go ahead and continue finishing. Then the last piece is just the valve. So this is coming together super, super well, and I'm super happy that it's all working out. So let's wait until tomorrow so we can finish this, hopefully get this finished with some of the stuff. All right, guys, so it's the next day. And we still 
are uh, everything's good actually with the motor um it's all good and sealed um you probably really wouldn't even know until we open it i'm not going to reopen it to check it but it said 24 hours so i'm pretty sure everything's good i had a nice good thin seal uh um around it so i'm pretty sure everything is good and once they're meshed together and it seals for 24 hours it's pretty much good to go right now i got the the um starter painted and i actually painted went ahead and painted the um the uh, variator cover and everything so we're gonna have to go out, go out there and check that out right now and see if it's dry so let's go outside and check it out all right so we're outside um got it pretty much painted uh not too bad i ran out of paint so i didn't get everything everywhere um because i ran out of paint not too bad um i actually painted it pretty good um not really too worried about this area because this area is going to be in the motor and you're not going to be able you're not really actually going to see that so really and honestly it sits up like this goes into the motor you're not going to see any of that um that's like, like i said it didn't get all of it because i ran out of paint so um but it looks a lot cleaner than it did um so i call that a win uh, like i said you're not really going to much see too much of it anyway the seat's going to be over top of this i just wanted it to look a little bit cleaner so when you did open it, it looked a little clean uh i wasn't trying to get it like super perfection clean but enough because you know the screen's going to cover this the cover is going to cover this you're not really going to see this once everything is back on and there's a cover that goes over this you're not going to see any of this i just wanted to clean it up to make it look a little bit better so we'll bring these inside and then we'll go work really on the valve get on this valve i got all the accessories right here we got new we got new springs we got new everything I gotta go get the um, the rockers and the cam, which are which is over there. We'll get all that. So this whole entire thing is gonna be replaced. All the inner guts, the cam, the the rocker, and the springs, and these valves are gonna be replaced um, with brand spanking new ones. Everything's new, even though the valves are new. Um, everything on top. Everything up here, these rockers, the cam, and everything is all old. They're all from the original bike. So we got to replace those to make sure that that ticking noise goes away. Um, I really think it's from these lifters, these lifters, um, these little settings, because they are a little worn and kind of like angled cut, where the new ones are nice and flat. So I think that is where that's from, because maybe the timing was off and it was knocking them pretty good to the point where they just completely just obliterated themselves. So we are going to go and take this off, get these changed out because that's the last little piece. Once this piece is off, we can get it right back in that motor and then that's it. This is the last final piece before we get this motor right back in, getting oil and get everything really up and going and getting this bike started again. I think that this is probably gonna be the culprit. Um, just because it's old, it's the original valves, the original uh, cam lifters you name it so i think uh just just because after i have done the crank and the crank was surprisingly 100 percent nothing wrong with it except for bending it after getting it out but after getting it out and getting it pushed out and cleaned there was really nothing wrong with the crank the crank was fine it was balanced fine it rolled fine it was fine now it could have had some clunking from the old debris sitting down in, in, inside of it so it did need to be cleaned but i think it as a a rough diagnose that there was nothing wrong with the crank it was nice to get a brand new crank in there because once we replaced everything everything went in smooth the really only rough issue we had was getting the bearing off the crank and getting the crank off of the stator side and then after that we were good but now we're going to get to the very last issue, uh, last thing on the bike that we need to do before we can put it back in, the valve. Clear bolt right here. Just take it off. This holds this little plate for the, for the uh, rocker. Plate that holds, holds this on. So what we do is we stick it right in there and pull, just like that. It's got a little suction from the oil. Hopefully this one will be nice too. Yep. Nice. Oops. Gotta get around it. All right, and then these, these just come right out. So as you see, see how burnt that is? Look 
if you could see, if it'll clear, um, it's got a divot. So this, there's not a whole lot of metal. Uh, they almost like it took a chunk out. So this is probably the culprit of why it doesn't want to fit. Because look, look at the difference. Look at the difference between the two. You see how smooth that's supposed to be? This is not smooth. This has been bent in. So this is the reason why the guy told me to re I should have replaced everything. I shouldn't have just attacked it everything. I should have just replaced it all. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to replace everything. These lobes actually look pretty good. But I think this is our definite culprit. I mean, that's a serious tap, tap, tap issue. And it's so thin, it's barely even metal even there compared to the intake where it's completely smooth and around like it's supposed to be. That's 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 a perfectly good good looking one. That's this one's terrible. So we probably could just do the valves and be done, but I'm gonna do it all just for good safe precautions. Just go ahead and knock the whole thing out. So we're gonna go ahead and um, get our tool on this thing. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and try and get these pieces out using this this new clamp thing I got, and hopefully this will work without shooting an NRI. All right, guys, I found it was sitting under the, the uh, bags for the other stuff. So, valve springs and lifters and um, uh, cam. So, the only thing we're really going to keep is we're going to keep... We're going to keep it all, but we're not going to use the, ex the exhaust one ever again. Um, I, think, I think the only thing I will keep is these little tappers. These tappers are real, can come in use later. Um, so the tappers are actually really good. I thought it was, I thought these tappers were bad, but it's not the tappers. It was, it was the, um, the lifter part. I mean, that's just, that's just metal right into that bad boy. That's crazy. Um, compared to this one where it's smooth, it's got a little wear, but it's nowhere near compared to the wear that the exhaust one had. I'm not for sure why that one was like that, but yeah, these tappers, these tappers are really good actually. So we're, we'll hold on to them. Use them in case we need to replace the tappers. The tappers get worn. The springs are still good. The valves are still good. The keepers are still good. So um, uh, that's what these little these little things are keepers to keep the the valve connected to the thing. So uh, so actually. Oh wow. Well, uh oh, <laughs> I just realized something. Um, we may not be able to use these new ones. We may have to put back in the old ones. I didn't look at them. Yo, those are huge compared to these. Those are huge. Oh, you mean to tell me I could have just left those in there? <laughs> yep, it looks like the springs, the inner springs probably would fit. Nope, not they wouldn't fit either. Wow. Like, yeah, that's not going to fit in there. How, it sells for a 250. Well, so much for that. I don't even think I can use any of this. These are way too... Yeah, those are way too big. They must have given me the ones for 300cc or 400cc. Darn it. Well, well, at least we know what the culprit is. So, it, 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 it sucks sometimes. You think you got something and there's no way of checking it until you actually start doing it. And that's the problem. I ended up buying these and I thought, yeah, these are fit and they're not gonna fit. Nowhere near gonna fit. These might fit on a bigger CC bike, but um, I'll have to go look at the thing and figure out what it was for. It said 250, but I think it may have either been a different 250, which is a good possibility. So, but I think we found our culprit. I think the actual um, lifters is what's going to do it. 
and if this and I think this um, we're gonna we're gonna just so okay so what we're gonna do um, so what we're gonna do is um, we're not gonna use these um, obviously they're not gonna fit they're they're just way too big and I didn't realize it till now so we'll just use we'll use a new cam we'll use the new lifters we'll put back in we, those those valves are the right valves so we'll use those and we we'll use the springs, and I think the keepers. Can we actually reuse those keepers? We might be able to reuse the keepers, but the, those keepers are fine. Those keepers are those keepers don't they're they're, they're fine. So we'll re put everything back together, which is sucky. Which basically all I had to do is just replace the lifters, and we'd have been good. So now I got to push this thing all back in there. So I didn't know. Uh, I would have, I should have checked them before I pulled them out and realized that's, that's going to be too big and I would just left them in there and just replace the lifters and have been done. But it's okay. Um, it's not a big deal. We'll go ahead and uh, clean everything up, get them all nice and clean, get them all back in and um, we'll go ahead and, and lube them up and, and we'll get them back in there. Not a big deal. Might be a little extra effort, but <laughs> we'll, we'll get them back in there. So right now we're going to go ahead and get back in the little caps since those are easy those are the first things that got to go in here anyway so we'll put these caps back on that's a bummer i took all this off then only to realize i had to put it right back on so it's okay um it gives us time um so if we actually do need to order the right ones we can it's not going to be the end of the world and you know we could pull the motor if we have to again just to replace this is not going to be a big deal but i think these will be fine i think these will be perfectly fine no issues whatsoever so um i'm not i'm not super worried about it um we'll just clean these up just a little bit definitely the clean the um the uh exhaust side so all right we lift it back make sure this area is nice and clean I think they're they're kind of uh, dirty too is because of um, oops that was my bad um, is because of um, could be the fuel getting it tuned right because it is a little dirty up in there than it is in the in the intake side so we'll try to clean up the, the the closing part so that way they do seal perfectly without any issues so so yeah And it also could have been couldn't have been messed up due to the fact that um, it actually wasn't sealing right. So okay, that looks pretty good. Yeah, it's just a bummer because now I got to put it back together, and I already had it off. So, um, but yeah, it's okay. Not a big deal. At least I know I did. I probably need to order some more new ones. And we'll put some fuel cleaners in there too. Once we get the bike running right, we'll pour, put some fuel cleaner in there to kind of take care of that, um, take care of that exhaust buildup. So they look really, really good. They're seated really, really good. I mean, they're not that old. Like this car has, this bike hasn't even gotten a chance to do any serious mileage. So I would not think that there be any issues of why these won't you know fit right or anything like that so so we get our turns so that way we can tell which way they go you don't have to do this I'm just doing this just 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 with my OCD just getting it kind of set up right so you so you can read it all right so now, flip these over. Okay, 
So now we're going to have to put these back in here. And I don't think it really much matters which one goes, where they go, as long as they go. So there's one there. One there. Actually, you know what? What we'll do, we'll do one at a time because they are a little bit finicky when you try to do do that. So, all right, let's go ahead and uh, get the first one with the keeper back in and we should be good. Okay, guys, so we're back. Um, we finally got this first one in. I wanted to see how it would go in before we uh, before I moved on to the rest of them. And they seems like it's in there pretty good. So just giving it a tap because sometimes you got to tap it. But all right, so now we're going to go do the other one. So we're going to get this one here. It actually works out quite well. Um, so that's a good sign. So... So I had to find the right ones that fit, that'll like keep it in place. Um, so they're actually working quite well. So, um, all right, so we're gonna go ahead and get this one going. All right, so hold it, twist it down. Gotta get it lined. This is actually, it goes in way more better than I actually thought it would. You have to fight with it a little bit because it wants to come popping out. But um, once you get it down a little bit, enough to drop them in, you got to move them, wiggle them so they'll fall. And then it should be good to go. All right, guys. So we got this all together. It's all in. Everything looks really good. All right. So we got our intake and we got our exhaust. So as you see... Let me grab the one that was messed up. Okay, so this is the one, this is the exhaust that was bad. As you can see, it's flat, it's bent, it's got a little metal gulging. And then look at the new one. That's the difference between the two. Um, you can obviously see that, that there's a flat, flat piece where this one is not flat. It's nice and curved, it's got a lot of metal on top. That's the way it's supposed to be. We also have our new uh, cam compared to the old one, which is not that bad. But um, you can see that there's the different difference of the coating and stuff. It, it's actually still pretty good. You could probably still use it. We'll, we'll definitely hold on to it as a backup. Um, but uh, this one's got the nice coating, um, Teflon coating on it. So we're just going to go ahead and do it all new. All right. So go back to our lifting things. Let's get my rag real quick. Just wipe everything because we're going to coat it with this stuff. All right. Let's get it all in there. <clears throat> We want it to be greased, we want it to be laced, we want it to have everything that we need. So, I'm going to go ahead and coat this. I want this to have some oil ready to go. So, in we go. The finessing. Alright, it's in there. See? Nice and good. Nice new. All right. All right. So this is our intake. Better it's going to be performing. So. All right, all right. Turn this, it's flat. All right. 
Then we'll just go ahead and just drive this home. All right. All right, we got him in there. All right, guys, so now we're going to go ahead and try and get this all together. Um, so we should go pretty simple. So it has some um, lines on there. The line needs to be top dead because right now it's sitting at top dead. So i get this over it. And just stick it on through. All right guys, and just like that, we are done. The motor is all together. The only thing we have not put on is the cover um, and all the timing covers, but it's all dialed in, it's all timed, it's all at top dead center. All the points are pointing for the crank, all the points are pointing for the, uh, for the cams. Everything seems to be going pretty good. So all we gotta do is we gotta put the cover back on and then we gotta put the wheel on the back of the motor with the, with the control arm and then we just can get it right back in the car, uh, back in the bike, and then we can um, get everything all hooked up, get it all um, oiled up, and then put the coolant in, and hopefully this will turn over and start. But everything seems to be going pretty good, the compression seems to be good, everything is timing right. <clears throat> I think we're going really good in the right direction, so um, just looking forward to getting this back in the bike, and then we can actually turn the key, and hopefully see if this thing will run. But guys, um, that's it for today. Um, we are going to stop. Um, in the next episode, we will get this bike a motor back in the bike. We'll get it all buttoned up and get it all back in there. Get all the fluids, get everything going so we can actually turn key and start this thing up. But guys, thank you so much for watching. If you guys like this, please give me a thumbs up and let me know what you think of the, of the episode so far. If you have an SYM 250, I think there's one other guy that actually does have one. Hopefully this information helps you out if you happen to break down your vehicle or your bike and actually have to do some work on it. So hopefully this all worked out for you guys and good information, but um, that's pretty much it for today. So like I said, in the next episode, we will be putting this in and getting this turnkey and getting it started and cross fingers. Hopefully everything goes really well. But guys, thank you so much for watching. You guys have a good and blessed day and I'm going to see you on the next fix. Until then, peace.